Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Esports Canada production. This is the Hearthstone, the Toronto Hearthstone Open Grand Finals. Now, um, the players agreed to, due to time constraints and interesting setup, the finals is going to be a best of three where Zay's coming from the winner's bracket is given a one game advantage. My name is Galleon. Thank you for tuning in and let me introduce my co caster today, Boxer13. Please, sir, introduce our mulligans. Hey, all, it's uh, Boxer here. Um, so, yeah, here comes the mulls. Um, so, it's going to be a Warlock versus Paladin. Yeah, he doesn't want the Farseer. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even looking at the Pally. Well, we definitely don't want two True Silver Champions. So he just <laughs> keeps the one True Silver Champion. Looks okay. like. Picks up uh, some decent cards. The Warlock looking at two mortal coils in that starting hand. So um, he's going to have some power against that uh, hero ability of our Paladin. Pardon the production values, guys. This was our first attempt at capturing a live event. And um, as you can see, we put some effort into it. And I think we're going to be absolutely getting better. But there's going to be a little bit of hiccups. Um, that first turn uh, tap from the Warlock, standard. Um, standard and expected playing uh, sort of a late game control type deck. And uh, hero ability from our Paladin, who's running uh, a deck with some heals and then some late game ability of its own. This Mortal Coil and uh, probably life tap here. That's really good. Uh, mill through the deck. You want to get your turn four Mountain Giant or your turn four Twilight Drake. So it's a good play. Absolutely makes perfect sense. Let me just take a moment and reiterate that again, this is uh, the grand finals and Zai's only needs a single victory to clinch this grand finals because of his winner's bracket advantage setup. Um, he throws down that um, accolade of pain, good for card advantage. You need something to try to catch up with those life taps and um, obviously a little bit of a slower play, but he's comfortable with that. Um, looks like Rev is starting to consider that Ancient Watcher. He's got another Ancient Watcher that he could play and then a taunt for the following turn. Just going to straight up silence it for the more aggressive play, it looks like. Yeah, he's thinking about it. Um, I'm not so sure about the silence because then he's just going to lose the Owl for free anyway. Mm. Yeah, I don't know about this play. Uh, he's going to lose the Owl and um, Zyze here is going to get a two for one off of the accolade, at least. So. Absolutely, I hear what you're saying. Putting the taunt up on to that Ancient Watcher uh, might have been the better play, but um, we'll see what he does. Now again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a rematch from earlier. It was in fact Zyze that pushed Rev down into the loser's bracket, but Rev has found his way back. Um, these players have gone through some some high-ranked players to make the finals. Uh, uh, Christoph, who was uh, former number one ranked in NA and is uh, famous for some of his rogue and other builds. Um, and there's the play as you were expecting that uh, Accolade of Pain going to pick off that Owl, clear the minion and get the card draw. Um, looks like he's thinking about a true silver champion, um, probably going to save that and be able to clear an Ancient Watcher next turn um, if that Accolade of Pain is still alive. Yeah, there's no reason for him to attack with it this turn. Um, sure. He's basically just using his mana efficiently, uh, equipping the weapon now and looking at what his options are going to be in the following turn. And there's that mortal coil that we knew we were expecting, but that's an even draw. It clears the minion, but both players get to draw a card. And that Accolade of Pain has done some very good work. Um, slowed things down for the Warlock and um, drew cards for a Paladin. Fantastic card. Yeah, and this was the perfect reason why he shouldn't have attacked uh, with the True Silver. I mean, if he attacked the Ancient Watcher, he would have just taken unnecessary damage. And he's not even able to kill it this turn with the Acolyte anyway, because it's gone. Uh, we're gonna see what he what he draws here. Yeah, and here's the situation that again, it's like um, if you're going to end up taunting the ancient watcher, it's unfortunate to silence it earlier. Um, you know, you kind of want to do one or the other, but um, again, it did give him that aggressive play. And here comes that Black Knight immediately to finish off that taunt. Um, so getting him some very early presence, um, and I would completely clear the board. So. Very strong turn. Now that Black Knight isn't there for later on. Um, maybe one of those giants getting taunted later, but gives him a nice strong presence early in this game. Right, he had to deal with that and that's yeah. the perfect way. So, um, I mean, of course targets are gonna come up later, but he, he has Tink Ma uh, sorry, 
Does he have Tink Master? Do they both have it in their hand? I wasn't. I thought I saw Tink Master. <laughs> uh, but he'll have he'll have options later for anyone else as well. Yeah, he did. See, there you go. There you go. He also has a Tink Master. Tink Masters for everyone. And there's that Mountain Giant. Now here's an interesting choice: Twilight Drake, Mountain Giant. How do we want to play? Do we Tink Master the Taunt? Uh, I think uh, right here he could just uh, use Pyro and Consecration. It will wipe out, and then he can attack with either his weapon, probably his weapon, and attack mm. directly with the Black Knight here. But there you go. Efficient use of his mana, reasonably efficient use of cards. Um, and he's thinking about the exact same play. Um, it does burn one of his two consecrations, um, but I mean, it's what you gotta do when you want to keep that board presence and keep the pressure going. Yeah, there is a strong taunt on board, and he did use the Black Knight already, and you don't really want to play the Tink Master here. No, he definitely needs to save that for larger targets, and uh, oh, I have a wrath. Oh, this works too. Yeah, this is actually way better. <laughs> I mean, he gets to keep the Consecration. Uh, he draws the card off the Hammer of Wrath. So, that's yeah, really good. Very efficient play. It sets him up very strongly. Um, minion's a little weak, but absolutely, he's got that board presence. Um, Hellfire doesn't quite clear the board because he's got that 4-4, and he's thinking about playing it. But here comes the Shadow Bolt. And probably, what's he going to do, the Harvest Golem or maybe the Farseer on himself? Nope, just the Harvest Golem to drop out. I'm going to be able to trade with that uh, Pyromancer and still leave up a 2-1 afterwards. And there we go. Okay, um, so Zai's here. Probably Twilight Drake. Mm. But I mean, uh, it'd be nice to get the Mountain Giant out while he can, cheaply. Very true, he can get that Mountain Giant out, maybe even drop an Accolade of Pain if he so wanted. Um, with the use of the two choices, that Twilight Drake is going to get a little weaker later on, but that Mountain Giant out reasonably, you know, this is the time when you want to start getting those big fatties up on that board. Um, and forcing that warlock to deal with him. Um, he's already down to 20 health. Potentially taking eight damage from a giant is uh, really going to cut into his ability to life tap. Is going to start putting him into lethal range. It's, it gets a little scary. Uh, playing the token here kind of shows that he's just going to crash the pyro into mm -hmm. the harvest goal. Oh no, he's attacking directly. Okay, so he's valuing, valuing, getting his opponent's life really low right here. Oh, that's kind of weird. I don't know. I guess he didn't think through his turn before doing that. Because he just oh. killed off his own token. So. And you can see the camera, his own reaction at that misplay, shaking his head and uh, in frustration. Now, admittedly, he's been playing Hearthstone at this point in the tournament, something around six hours. And um, this is the grand finals. He's been there for a while. It's easy to have that concentration lapse for just that moment. I don't think anyone who's played the game has played that Pyromancer once or twice who's dropped that card and went, Oh god, what did I do? Right, right. Okay, uh, Zyze again. Uh, nice. He's got the big game hunter counter. Uh, that's the perfect card to kill out the giant. And possibly Consecration here. Open board. Yeah, this is amazing. He's got the card advantage, he's got the board presence. Uh, he's definitely ahead right now, yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. So he's feeling very good. He does have a taunt in his hand. Um, now, Jaraxxus is in the, in the hand for our Warlock, so he might be uh, life tapping a little bit after this. There we go. Pushing that health down. Oh, down. excellent oh. draw there. Yeah, that's huge. Now, does he drop it now? Looks like he's yeah. going through. Absolutely. And he can now, does he Farseer himself? Uh, all right, get the value out of the card. Maybe push off Jaraxxus for a turn or two. Yeah, he wants to put more presence on the board, and that's the thing with Jaraxxus. Um, you have to play out your Molten Giants before you play the Jaraxxus. Or else they're just locked in your hand. Because for... then, yeah, you're basically never going to be able to play the Mountain Giants after that. 
It's uh, with Draxus resetting your hero's health to 15, it's almost impossible to take the damage and still be alive necessary to let those Molten Giants get their mana cost down. Now, what's the play for our Paladin here? Um, He's playing the Tink. I, I, I feel like he's holding on to this Mountain Giant for too long. I feel like he could have... Oh, we can still play it. He gets the 5-5 five, five and not the squirrel. That's very Just unfortunate. Hero. You know, this is something that we've noticed from, from Zev throughout the tournament, is that he is very reluctant, very hesitant to actually drop that Mountain Giant, even when it's mana cost starts getting really low. Um, I don't know. I guess he wants to play it when he knows it's going to create a big impact. He's saving it for a later game, I suppose. But um, with his opponent so low, I think he all he needs to do is really get some toughness on the board, and, that and light then that brings up a second try hurt. to finish him in a turn. Yeah, it's it seems to make sense to get those big fatties on the board and force the response from the warlock, especially as you say, because he is so low. But um, again, stylistic play. This is the way that he's. It's been rewarding him throughout the tournament to slow play those giants and. Uh, He's going to keep doing it in this game, knowing that he has the lead in this series. Just needs one game win to go home with our grand prize. Uh, and there you go, that Hellfire clearing off the board, bringing the health down to just nine. Probably going to Farseer after this has to be the call, absolutely. He's probably thinking about Farseeing his Oh, the own, Devil uh, Sower. Yeah. yeah, just because he's he's probably going to Drax this next turn. Yeah. Uh, fearing the damage, he decides not to. He doesn't want to the game. Yeah. I mean, there's a true server champion out there. Um, you know, he's not sure. Sideboarding was allowed. So even though he's played this opponent before, he doesn't know. Maybe Argent Commanders are in this deck now. Uh, maybe there are uh, potential damage options. Um, and it gets very, very scary when you're down to so low, low health. And you're in the Grand Finals and you're looking at a potential loss um, at any moment. All right. Players... Health is even at 12. We have a weapon in hand for a paladin, and we have board presence for our warlock. But the card advantage, obviously, with our paladin. He's thinking out the turn. What's the move? Again, mountain giant. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, mountain giant and shield master, probably yeah. most efficient of his mana. And then kill off the 3 3 with his weapon because he doesn't want to leave too much on the board. Exactly. If his health was higher, the Twilight Drake, the Mountain Giant Twilight Drake play maybe, but with his health so low, you want to get that taunt out. Um, and that's the play that he makes. Oh. And here we go, he can clear off Oh, he's going to kill the five. Ooh. Well, that brings him down to nine with the healing effect, so... Um, well, with the taunt, he's feeling confident. Right, I guess he, he values um, taking a little more damage now and the Taz Dingo surviving whatever's on the board at the moment mm -hmm. so because the farseer can't kill testingo but the other one would and it looks but. like rev has picked up his final molten giant so now here's the interesting question do i play the molten giant now i mean i want to get this molten giant out before my lord drax or it becomes a dead card uh looks like he's going to oh, smash into the does he smash into it and oh. And then take um, faster the giant? Oh, that I would. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, this is perfect. You can just mount a giant now and use Siphon Soul. There you go. Card count is getting really low, though. But he is threatening lethal, I and mean, guys does have to deal with this. Absolutely, this is a very strong play. Sets him up uh, fantastically. Well, he does pick up a taunt. He's got a taunt and a heal. Can't play both of them at the same time. Um, no immediate removal and damage or such. Um, what do you do? Do you throw up the taunt and something else? And then maybe the oh. Sylvanas? Or do you just throw up the heal? The heal's not enough. The heal is just going to be countered by the straight-up attack. So I think yeah. he's forced to play the taunt here. So, I mean, Taunt Sylvanas most likely is what's going to come down. Absolutely. Seems like that has to be the play. Doesn't have any ability to draw cards. Doesn't have any kind of board clear or direct damage uh, option to him. He's just double checking how much health he's going to get back. to play the Sylvanas first, no and then the there comes the Taunt. The only way to keep himself alive. And now let's see, does the Warlock draw what he needs to finish the game this turn? 
And as we switch over to the camera, we find the Devil Sword, or we see the Tink Master comes out, and it's a squirrel, and there we go. Yeah, he, he had it in his hand the whole time, but I mean, uh, he didn't really have a choice. Size had to play up the hand the way he played it. And you can see the smile on Rev's face in that camera there. He's, he's talking out the game with, uh, with his opponent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was game one of our grand finals. And what that does, that ties our two players up, brings them into an ace match. They are playing for a $50 grand prize. Uh, this was, again, a tournament uh, by Esports Canada, the Microsoft Store at Yorkdale. Give Microsoft some love for helping out the esports community once again i'm galleon and box or any final comments uh not really it was a standard game uh they were both pretty much forced into there wasn't really many hard dishes decisions that game mm -hmm. yeah all so, right so yeah i'm excited to see final game absolutely and hopefully you'll join us there in the next video thank you so much ladies and gentlemen